Paul, you mentioned in passing the Disney Fox merger, which mm -hmm. I think is just the most recent example of sort of the narrowing of the studio world. Um, Kevin, I'm curious to hear what you think of this merger and if it's going to affect Marvel in any way in the immediate future. Uh, well, it's not 100% complete yet, so there's only so much. Uh, I'm allowed to say so much they even tell me. Um, <laughs> but uh, Paul mentioned the streaming service, and I think that is something that, that we're going to be adding content to, which is exciting, which I love your uh, analogy of the campfire, right? As many people as you can get around the campfire and tell stories. Campfires can be different. We are going to tell stories for the streaming service that we wouldn't be able to tell mm -hmm. in a theatrical experience, uh, a longer-form narrative, which we're excited to, to dive into. That's what comics are. It's about as long form a narrative as exists, but also maintaining that theatrical experience, mm -hmm. which of course is our bread and butter. And the lines around the block, if you're lucky, and the theater's full of people as people are enjoying A Star is Born right now. That is a theatrical experience. That's a concert. Mm -hmm. And that's why people keep going back and back. And that's what we want with all of our movies, and certainly Panther provided that. And you have anticipation, and, and certainly, um, you know, Black Panther's not real. He's not a real person, but what? he represents, <laughs> he represents <laughs> real hopes and real dreams and real representation. And, and so there's a certain amount of pressure uh, that came with that, delivering on what people have been dreaming about for years, whether they read the comic book or not. Because a lot of people said, wait a minute, this is a hero that looks like me. And the importance of that really can't be understated. Mm -hmm. Having somebody, mm -hmm, um, sure. as we had a film called Ant-Man and the Wasp with Evangeline Lilly, um, starring alongside Paul Rudd as the title hero, Brie Larson is starring as Captain Marvel uh, in March for us. And people get so excited to see themselves on that big screen. And you take that very, very seriously. <laughs> we're talking about films that matter, what we've seen with Crazy Rich Asians and Black Panther this year and these diverse casts at the center of films. Tell me about, was there a big fight you had to take on to get these two movies made with the cast that they had? Uh, not for us, no. We, we uh, uh, had Black Panther on our schedule for, for a while and we're looking forward to, to bringing it to the big screen. We had amazing support. Bob Iger and Alan Horn at no point questioned it, and quite the opposite, quite, you know, said this needs to stand alongside the biggest movies you've made. Um, and, it, and it had a budget, you know, that matched that. And at no point was there a question about this market or that market or where does it play or what does it not play. It was um, a big movie that we were going to make with an all, almost entirely African and African-American cast. Mm -hmm. If you're in a position of power and you're the one doing the hiring, we have learned on our last uh, number of movies that the more diverse the group of people around the table, the better the movie, mm -hmm. and the better yeah, the yeah, ideas, mm -hmm. and the better it's going to look. And and Ryan Coogler asked us, said, um, you know, do you have uh, production designers, costume designers that that you like to work with? We said, sure, um, but if you have some, let let us know. And he said, well, I've worked with with various people on films that were excellent, but much smaller than Black Panther. And our answer is never outright no. It's let's let's meet. And in the case of uh, every single crew member uh, that he brought to us, they blew us away. They yeah. were they were incredible. Rachel Morrison ended up uh, being nominated for Academy Award while we were filming, or just after we were filming. And and our production designer, and there are big sets on Black Panther, big world creating mm. sets. Our production designer uh, blew us away in the presentation and in the delivery of the of the movie. Ruth Carter doing our doing our costumes that were somewhat inspired by the comics, somewhat inspired by an in house visual development department we have at Marvel and then brought to life. And that movie couldn't possibly have looked any better mm -hmm. with anybody else. And it was because I think we were open to listening and, and, and believing in Ryan, um, but giving people an opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, and now, you know, we're desperate to work with them all on all of our films going forward. Mm -hmm. A lot of these films do feel very timely right now. How do you know when it's the right time to make a movie? We were lucky that Ryan Coogler wanted to come on board and had something to say and had questions that he'd struggled with growing up in Oakland, California, and using our genre and our canvas to tell it on a, in a big way. I also think, you know, th there could have been a Black Panther movie 10 years ago, 20 years ago. It would have been a very different movie. Mm. Um, luckily, Ryan's very young. He would not have <laughs> been directing it 10 years, 20 years ago. Uh, but... You know, we find ourselves with these universal characters, the, the iconic characters that have been in comics for 50 years or more, but the world influences us as we tell these stories. Mm -hmm. And Wakanda in particular was always about uh, sort of the negativity that comes from isolationism. Mm -hmm. This is a mysterious African 
country that has this amazing technology. Mm -hmm. And well, if that existed, what else, what, what, why, why have they allowed what was going on in Africa to go on over the past 200 years? And that was one of the questions Ryan dealt with. And that's why that movie is, has a very globalist message, not unlike 22 July. Um, I think that we were writing that film uh, a number of years ago. So it, it becomes, as often happens, even more relevant somehow by the time it actually is released. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Paul Greengrass. Gabriela Rodriguez. Cece Dempsey. I'm Nina Jacobson. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching The Hollywood Reporter. The Hollywood Reporter's Roundtable. On YouTube. On YouTube.